group. We take requests for healings in the second hour. simply wish to make a healing request, please type into the chat room on wolfspiritradio.com with the name of the person, the location, and the condition that the person needs healing. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Welcome. August the 24th, 2014, you're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio, No Borders Radio, Ever Beyond Radio, and probably UniversalMindRadio.com? Yes, we're well pleased to be here with you, JP. This is Frank, and um, we are on, aren't we? Absolutely, Hello. we are live and direct to our audience and um, all, right. all the other 50 apparently we're also listened to by apparently 37,000 other extra dimensional listeners somehow on the uh, cosmic internet well that's delightful Wowzers. we shall have something for them that'll meet their needs and expectations I'd like to start this show tonight with a little uh, roundtable discussion between all of us and bring us up to date. And I'm speaking to the uh, Earth Mind group right now, Earth Mind Healers. And um, there have been some interesting experiences and things happening, such as Mike in, in uh, the Bay Area. What did you experience with the earthquake? Well, I was uh, happened to, I'm in the hospital, and <laughs> by the way, down here in the Bay Area, I've had a little complication for my condition which is now abating i'm scheduled as it is now to go home tomorrow but um i was up at 3 20 a.m going heading for the bathroom and all of a sudden i heard this huge noise it sounded like somebody climbing up the side of the building and the the uh, shades are rattling and everything and i was found myself thinking uh what are they doing cleaning the windows at 3 20 in the morning and then i happened to look around the room and noticed that uh everything was swinging back and forth and so there was a rolling continuation of that for about 15 20 seconds and that that was really odd so that ended up uh it was hard to get back to sleep so i ended up um laying here in a semi-conscious state with my crystals for a couple of hours and it was uh, i think that was it seemed to have really cleared me out and uh loosened up some of my energy blockages i had going on so that's it for me. Well, that's interesting. And Rachel and I and several others had the experience of, of getting energy feedings or being knocked out, not able to quite get into body this morning. And um, I kind of looked into that and realized this this is because of the one reason is because of the disturbance to the, the, the field of consciousness that the devic forces who are responsible for the earthquakes were still trying to get things balanced and settled out again. So uh, our bodies have wonderful ways of of adjusting to that kind of experience. What is your experience, Rachel? Um, my experience was I had shared with you that um, I didn't wake up till like 10:20 in the morning, which is very unusual for me. I, I usually wake up around eight o'clock, and so when I woke up, I went whoa. And then all day, I've I've not I I haven't really felt great. Like my tummy's been off. Um, there's all this energy on top of my head, and and then I was getting a very strong feeling. It's around all the earthquakes with. Um, the release and my dream I had that night was I was trying to get a, to a friend because she had emailed me that night before the earthquake and I hadn't heard from her in a very long time and she lives right in that area so in my dream I was trying to get to her mm -hmm. um, so I found that to be very interesting the timing of all of that so um, it just felt like there was some energetic something going on in the night school in those particular areas, and then I was trying to get there. Um, they were even showing me a certain highway that I needed to get to, um, and I didn't even know that highway existed. I checked it out, and it's exactly in that area. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Jane and I spent five years in the Bay Area uh, healing and teaching healing energetic classes and whatnot. And um, we learned to sense when they, something was building up. It would feel just like what you described, kind of an uneasiness in our stomachs. And, and when it, as it would build up, there would be a pressure build up the base of our brains. And... Um, one time we were driving up on our Sunday break north of, of San Francisco on the Point Reyes Highway, and it just got really, really intense right about that time. And so I pulled over to the side and, and, and told uh, Jane, this is earthquake energy we're feeling. This is really how I learned how to access earth mind was from that first experience. And so we went projectors ourselves down into the earth into into the right on the San Andreas fault line where we were sitting and we lifted that energy upward just radiated it up through our own systems and, until we felt a relaxation and we also reached out and used the, the um, um, other animals and creatures around us in, in that entire area to, to use their desire and will to release this earthquake energy and it, it apparently worked because it subsided and then we traveled to Arizona the next day and um, we'd been there about a day or so and it read, read in the paper where there had been a 3.2 earthquake in that area uh, immediately after we left but they had expected one a lot worse than that so, because of the instrument buildup and everything, so that was a good validation for us. That's what kind of kicked us off on working with earthquakes. And when we came back to San Francisco again, we told our story and we gathered quite a group of people together to monitor earthquakes and release the energy off of them, just as we do in in our Saturday and Wednesday Earth Mind Think Tank group. Uh, uh, and when we meet here, and th- that group is still functioning down there, and that may well be one reason why there's not been any destructive earthquakes right up till this one had to release. And sometimes they just have to let go too, you know. So, anyhow, Rich, what's happening in Hawaii? What have you been up to? I've been sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I got up uh, Saturday morning at 2 o'clock and drove up to the top of Mount Haleakala and took pictures of the sun rising. I got a picture I'm going to post of uh, Jupiter, Venus, and the moon in a triangular form as the sun was rising. Really cool. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel anything about the earthquake. I was sleeping. So. Well, you have minor quakes there all the time. Uh, do you notice those? No, I really don't. Mm-hmm. Well, they're I, usually three points or lower, so you probably wouldn't notice them. No, um, I don't have anything to report about the earthquake. Okay. Rich, when you do post the picture, do put it on Universal Mind Radio for everybody. Yeah, Gary, would you like to talk a little bit about our, our new website? Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> We've got we're, we're uh, expanding away from not away but uh, uh, adding another network connection from World Spirit Radio is going to be another radio station which we're we're going to be having our own programming twenty four seven or if you know up to that if if we need it or want it but right now we simulcast. Frank's shows on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday on Universal Mind Radio, which is, you go to universalmindradio.com, and you can, uh, you know, click on uh, to listen to the show when it's on, and uh, there's a, another link there about YouTube archives. You can click there and listen to all other shows that are uploaded to YouTube that you can listen to anytime you want. And uh, we have blog a blog there as well, which with news up uh, galactic news, earth news, world news, uh, cutting edge, state of the art, top of the line uh, uh, things that are being done by the by the 
people that are are working to uh, help us uh, get rid of the cabal and bring in a new world for everyone. The union. Yeah, we're definitely upgrading uh, what we have to contribute, and and uh, so more of our skills can be made mm-hmm. available to people. Kimry, what's been happening in in your side of the world? Kimry, are you there? Maybe she's not on just at the moment. Yep, yep. It was loud. I had to shut the door. Um, it's uh, I'm I have a seven year old here. Um, what's happening over here is, from my perspective, um, this culmination of acts that have, that will eventually be shown on a timeline um, that have actually, I feel, triggered and continued to trigger on the multi dimensions of what of all this energy work that we're all doing in our dream time. Uh, in our connecting on the grid like we're doing right now. So the grid space timelines, um, the collapsing timelines, the traveling, you know, all the work that we're doing in the light grid is essentially coming to a head. We are getting ready. Gaia is getting ready, I feel, to go in and through this photon belt, this massive labor of a changeover as some of you were speaking about already and there are fundamental core changes that are going to be happening at the count you know community and county and state levels that people are going to be um uh hearing about i think very very soon we are i'm working with a team that has the ability to take uh, and make uh, public service announcements, universal public per- service announcements, um, and the difference between the old emergency broadcast systems and the new ones is that these are going to be really great news and ways that everyone can participate in taking out this old guard and stepping forward as the new guard, essentially, by using our free will act, uh, by centering into who, who we are as a, as a light being, our purpose, what we came here to do. Um, and so there's an awful lot happening, Frank, that if I were to get into it right now, it would lead to too many questions. So what what's happening is we're getting ready to um, create a... a um, a nightly Q&A, um, a, um, uh, locations where people can actually go and talk in real time, like libraries, bookstores, coffee shops, etc. And this campaign is getting ready to take off. And the Crystal Skull, that is a record keeper, uh, I feel part of their purpose here in helping us remember who we are in this process are record keepers ourselves and what we're doing in real time is correcting the record bringing everything into alignment bringing everything back into balance and bringing that power from outside of ourselves back into the inside and this is going to blossom and kind of open up like a lotus, and I feel that it's going to affect us globally. Wonderful. Do you have a site for us to come to for the updates on that? N- not yet. It's all being formulated right now. Literally, we're getting you know, the birthing pains are here right now. So we're kind of scrambling right now, going, "Oh my gosh, what do we need to do?" So we're, we're working on it, Frank, and we'll ma- I'll make sure make myself available as everything is occurring okay i I apologize we don't have a central location just yet well we look forward to your contributions in here on universalmindradio.com for where people can come to find updates and announcements and uh, progression so thank, thank you we look forward to that all right who else would like to contribute something tracy what's happening in in canada uh, I have had the absolute luxury of spending the entire day on my knees in a garden <laughs> and communicating with elementals and plants and um, 
on a on a, a small community level, I'm uh, I was sick for a few weeks with uh, bronchitis, and now I'm back with my meditation group, and they're they are so wonderful to be with, and they bring a lot of uh, wonderful information that they've gathered <clears throat> in other places to the group, and that's really exciting, and also. Um, the chakra clearing CD that you created, uh, we're using that in the meditation as, as well as, so we begin with that and then go into our meditation. And so it's a pattern that I'm going to establish with my group. Uh, and, um, it's, it's exciting to be able to expand w- with them and share with them the knowledge that, uh, we've collectively gathered uh, through you, Stephen and uh, Francis and the Galactics. We're ever so grateful for the the lessons and and also we introduced the uh, <clears throat> the goddess um, bringing in the goddess energy and uh, enhancing the goddess energy with the sun through the third eye and we did that. Uh, so the, it's beautiful to be able to share those lessons and expand uh, my understanding and share that knowledge with everyone. And so on a Canadian level, uh, I can't speak for the whole country, but through my my eyes, um, the world is just, uh, just exploding with this excitement and joy and beauty. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I sense Gaia very strongly always. Mm-hmm. And you're the new president of the local doubters group there. Do you want to tell us about that? And where can people in the London, Toronto area contact you? Or do you have a website? Well, uh, there's always the Canadian Society of Dowsers, uh, dot com and that people can access that information. And also uh, London Dowsers. Uh, uh, I've been, I am being handed the torch to the London Dowsers Group, and uh, we have monthly meetings in London, Ontario, uh, every, the first Monday of every month, and whenever there's a holiday, we have it the following Tuesday. Uh, but to, uh, you can absolutely access it via the Canadian Society of Dowsers.com, and that information is available there. So, yeah. So... Uh, I was luckily, I was very excited. I was the, uh, the last, um, last month, I was the speaker and I was actually teaching beginning dowsing. And, uh, this, uh, this meeting that we're having in September, I will also be, uh, teaching. Last, last month I taught, uh, how to use a pendulum <clears throat> and a variety of other ways of dowsing and detecting energies and uh this time I'm going to be uh using other other ways uh using like uh dowsing rods and bobbers and uh the instrument that you created called the oracle um and using uh and also using your senses like when you find an energy like you talked about uh when you are in the middle of an earthquake, exp- be very, very awake and aware of those sensations and where they are in your body. And that in itself is the, the best dowsing tool of all. And uh, now it's amazing. I can walk down a, a street in a, anywhere and I can tell you where the ley lines are. I can feel them and then now I can actually sort of feel them as though I was a a bird flying over the building and I can tell you where those are I can feel them before I even look for them it's really amazing how it's waking up that even more and more (coughs) dowsing Mm -hmm. is the best way to develop psychic ability because every time you pick up a dowsing tool and reach out with your mind seeking something even if it's information you open channels intuitively open channels to that source of information and bring it back in and your mind learns to bring it up to the frontal lobes and and then interpret it as information and that's what dowsing is all about and that's that's why I've loved it for so long is it's the way I've always begin my psychic 
uh, intuitive classes is teaching people how to dance because that's something they can do every day and use it in many, many, many ways. Susan, what was your experience since we talked last? Well, things have been kind of quiet here. Uh, not really too much of anything. Uh, just trying to keep clearing things because just like everybody else, you know, what we've been talking about, it's, I keep getting hit and going back to the same patterns and I'm going, no, nope, I need to clear and just keep clearing. Um, and I get a lot of the, the pressure in the, in the, in the base of my skull that goes up and I have I, actually I use my crystals to uh, kind of like what you had Glenn do um, I put the crystals around my neck and at the base of my skull and uh, just push positive energy into there to clear things out and do kind of like Mike does and, and surround myself with the crystals and just you know, just clear because I keep getting hammered. And mm-hmm. this morning, I when you guys were talking, I'm going, well, shoot. I woke up about 3.30, and I was going, why was I waking up from a sound sleep? And I had my cat come and go, what you doing, what you doing? And I'm going, okay. And that was here in Idaho. And we're kind of far away from California, so I must have felt something. And then this morning, I woke up, and I'm going, how come I have this? headache at the base of my skull and it was really hard to, for me to focus mm-hmm. I just felt like I, I, I was trying I was that pressure that that can rise from the subconscious mind pulling information from the from the chakra system which reaches out and is a, a t- in a tumult through the vibra port to everything in the world gathering information constantly and your subconscious mind will bring up things into the reticular at the base of the brain and it separates it out and sends it to the portion of the brain that creates the hologram particularly in the frontal lobe of your reality that allows you to interpret what's going on and that's how you use your psychic ability is by listening to those subtle impulses and and letting that that energy develop uh, a fact or information of some kind and when you feel a block pressure uh, at the base of your spine there's two things you can do one is just to, to, to well, it's just like opening a channel up into the frontal lobe to see if it's information or something you need in the physical plane. Or you can release a channel right up through in your crown chakra into the oversoul and release that pressure. Because many times that is, is uh, your body working with you trying to clear and release stress energy of some kind or another or some pattern or form. That, that it's trying to clear out of its system. And uh, if you feel energy at the base of your spine, you build up in a block. Um, many times that information can be rising from earth mind, so you open that channel up through, uh, through uh, your, your root chakra, and that delivers information from earth mind, the Akashic records from the past that your subconscious may be asking for or your oversoul may be needing to work with to help you understand something. And also that energy built up at the base of the spine, uh, particularly around the sex chakra, uh, it can be kundalini energy, which is earth energy itself. And raising that energy up the spine and releasing it through your crown chakra clears those psychic channels and, and allows allows your, your system to work in conjunction with psychic consciousness or spiritual consciousness. So we have to learn to heed these body signals, particularly these pressures and these little achy things that hang up and pester us, because they all mean something. Okay. You know, Frank, this is Jackie in Oregon, and I had no idea that that's what was going on. I felt really heavy energy in my neck and head this morning when I woke up, and actually yesterday also. And I've been using essential oils to try to relieve it. And now that you're saying that, I can totally see that that's the kind of thing I'm having. It's not a headache, right. it's pressure. Are you feeling it right now? I'm sitting, no, because as we're talking about it, I'm sitting down, and I've got my... Uh, my crystals on my shoulders at the base mm-hmm. of my head and I'm feeling like it's lightening up and I'm going to do a 
Oh, well, sure. just take your awareness down to that area of pressure and just create a channel right out through the top of your head and release it and see if it, that pressure doesn't immediately release. Because many times, particularly if you feel pressure uh, on top of your head, uh, you should open up and allow your oversoul energy and guidance to come in and flow down through your system where it, it, ex, it extrapolates or brings information in or promptings that can rise back up to to the frontal lobes or the desktop of your biocomputer because you're working with the hard disk of your biocomputer as you do this and the operating system, uh, the directive operating system that selects and controls information is the reticter in the base of the brain it's, it's often called, it's below the, what I call the psychic center but uh, uh, learning to operate this is what gives you access to information that ordinarily would uh, is just lost to us out there we, but it's all very available okay who else would like to comment about Frank, anything Frank this mm-hmm. is Dent in Oregon yeah same thing was going on with me although I was having lots of tension and uh, pressure at the base of my spine and and in my lower back and and I wasn't aware of where it was coming from where it was coming from and didn't really have any idea how to clear it until you just started talking about releasing it up through the crown chakra and I've been doing that since you began talking about it and it's beginning to lessen it's been it's been very um, strange here. It's been kind of quiet, but then we had some animal issues yesterday where there there was a conflict between some of our animals that caused a lot of tension, and um, we weren't really we didn't know what what that was coming from. And well, they were probably feeling the earthquake tension right. building up. Right, that's what we. But in I, your in your case, the clearing work you you've been doing, clearing the blocks out of your chakra system, uh, is probably what's allowing the kundalini energy to rise. That's a definite positive step in in the evolution of your your, your spiritual consciousness and being able to access earth mind because you have to clear those blocks before you have the the psychic sensitivity to work in these. Ex- extended systems and cross-dimensionally. We've been using the um, chakra clearing tape daily pretty much uh, to help with that. It's been very... Uh, and that'll do it. been very beneficial to... And for you, for you listeners out there, uh, I have the chakra clearing meditation um, available. Just email me at fljordan at cable1.net or look on my website, Psytronics.com. That's P-S-I-T-R-O-N-I-C-S.com. And uh, we can get these, that and, and the, the uh, Oracle Spring Pendulum, which is a, by common appreciation is, is probably one of the finest dowsing tools in the world. Because it it has a sensitivity that no chain pendulum can possibly achieve, and so uh, we'll talk about that another time. Yeah, we, uh, also, you can uh, excuse me for butting in. You can listen to or go to Frank's website uh, off of UniversalMindRadio.com. There's a link on the front page. You just click there, go straight to Frank's website where he has all the CDs, the pendulums, the information is. Making appointments, all his infos right there. Okay, go ahead, Dent. Well, we have, we received ours in the mail, and, and we're really looking forward to the, uh, to the class on the 27th. That well, was that'll be conducted by Teresa. Do you want yeah. to tell us more about that, Teresa, so others can tune into that? Sure. Uh, I want to introduce dowsing. Uh, and the the steps to like the very beginning steps, so that uh, you can develop the your intuition and look at the signals that are created by looking at a pendulum. Uh, um, I'd like to also introduce different ways using your body. Uh, there's 
uh, fingernail dowsing. There's eye blink dowsing. You can use your tongue. You can use your body as it sways back and forth. You can even hold a teacup in your hand, and um, it'll it'll move in a way that uh, won't normally move uh, unless you ask it a question. So it's just following the real basic steps in the very beginning, and that's where I'd like to start it off. And because I know that when I started, it seemed very, very confusing. I didn't understand it, and it was easy to give up, but I just knew it was magic, and I was not going to give it up at all. And uh, so I, when I practiced, uh, I had a business here at uh, at my Oh, part of my house and my bookkeeper. I'd always, we'd always work, <laughs> work with the, uh, each other. I had the luxury of being the, the boss, <laughs> and uh, saying, "Okay, we're going to douse now. What do you think about this?" And that practice back and forth was really and truly the best, um, the best way to really develop it. Because yes, you make mistakes, but. It's in those mistakes that I think we we gain some of our biggest lessons. So I'd like to start off with baby steps uh, with everybody. So just if you want to uh, bring something to this, if you have uh, a pendulum or anything that dangles on the end of a, a, a string, even a necklace or a set of keys, it's better if it's like a, a necklace or something, uh, a pendulum. If you have a, um, even a guitar pick, bring a guitar pick. I'll show you how you can douse with a guitar pick, or even a little, you know, those little tabs on the on a bag of bread, a little piece of plastic. Um, <clears throat> if you have rods, dowsing rods, which are just basically coat hangers bent in a shape of an L, uh, can show you how to use those. And um, I'll show you some other and talk about some other instruments that uh, you, you can use. And also, again, Frank does sell the uh, the Oracle uh, pendulum, and it is outstanding. It is the most amazing tool. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, when I first bought it, I thought, well, this is kind of nice. It looks kind of unusual, but it is. Uh, it's kind of like a bobber but it has a really uh, sensitive spring on it, and it's just so sensitive that uh, it barely you barely get the question out, and, uh, and, and it'll respond. It's just incredible. So I highly recommend that everyone purchase that because you will, you will end up using it mostly uh, for, for daily use, for sure. And um, we'll hey, talk about all uh, the other hey. things. Teresa, mm-hmm. do you want? Would you be interested in broadcasting your uh, teachings over the sh- on the radio, if when you're doing it at the same time? Sure. So, uh, if you make it, you know, an appointment to schedule, so everybody knows when it's going to happen. I'm having the done. realization that we can have up to 25 um, auditorily on a site, or, or mm-hmm. 10. Uh, and Kimberly, I'm aware that you have more people who can see your more than ten, can't you? On on your some of your your sites. As far as um, meeting more, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm limited on Skype right now because I don't have Pro right now. But yes, I will find out. I think I think I have one that has up to 35 people on it. It's um. With video? Yep. Um, wow, me, that's uh, what we yeah. need. Yeah, let me tell that's you the name of it. Mm-hmm. Let me go. Let me go research in my little video archives, and I'll tell. I'll, I'll post the uh, the name of it up there for you. Just just a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Because for this to work, and uh, they really need to see what Trace is doing. And right. We right. can use this once we've got to they got the site set up as an ongoing educational site. Right. Right. Hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Bam, you I just, hit the nail on the head. Nifty. I just met a lady yesterday. Talk about conjuring people up. I was on my hands and knees uh, plucking weeds out of the driveway, and this lady walked by with uh, her dog, 
and uh, she was telling me that she works for a major uh, bank in Canada, and her job is uh, creating videos uh, to go world worldwide, like webcasts, so that uh, they can teach people all about banking and things like that. So I'm thinking, I'm really happy to meet you because <laughs> you know, it might be something really valuable that um, we could uh, share you know because she's very much interested in in metaphysics and I hope she's listening tonight hello Sue and your beautiful dog I hope you're listening tonight that's, uh, I shared the website with her that's correct um, many many years have been um, uh, people have been using the internet uh, in a in a corporate form to have their meetings very much you know like uh, what's that um, in Star Wars and they got the Jedi Council and there's these guys who are there and kind of they're like TV TV screens they're holograms uh, essentially people have ha- been having these virtual meetings since the 80s uh, they started out over telephones but now it does it over the internet and they're using these conference facilities they're very common they're just called a, um, you could say a, vo- a video conference um, but one of the things that I'm, I'm looking into for Wall Spirit, and, and well, I'll, I'll be very happy to share my findings, is what's called a whiteboard, where um, anybody who's on, for instance, you're hosting the show, you could go to the whiteboard and write things on it, and draw and you know throw pictures on and things like that. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. How would we proceed to get this all set up? Um, they well, you just you can. They're really common, Frank, and they're free, most of them, because, like I said, these things were developed in in you know <laughs> many years ago, and uh, they still exist. Uh, and they don't. They're not owned by Microsoft. You know, Microsoft does not own the internet. Uh, the internet has uh, is is much vaster than Microsoft's world. Uh, as it was much faster than AOL and all these things. Um, all right. It's the sum total of it. So people have been developing this this stuff for years so that people can have, literally, these meetings like we're talking about, like we're on at the moment. We're on an audio conference. So you're just taking it up the right. next step. Uh, but What's a webinar? Like a, a webinar is very similar. Uh, and a webinar is basically a whiteboard and a radio broadcast like we're doing. That kind of thing, and people call in uh, to a uh, a call center that connects them to the to the output to, to the to the webinar uh, stream. But you can do a web, web. We do a webinar every week, folks. This is it. This is it. This is what a webinar is, essentially. Uh, but if we had a white screen that you could put pictures on or draw on, put words on, um, you could you the 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 potentials are infinite. And you can create a multimedia show that doesn't take much uh, effort to do. And uh, it's already out there. You just find these things called widgets or plugins, well, and, and I can help you through that. And we'll, we'll develop something good because I want uh, something. How, like do get, how do we get? How do we? How do we get a uh, uh, hundred people on video all at once? So we can be like we are right now. Only there's a hundred of us, where uh, we can see uh, each other. At, I mean, how level? How far can you go in that direction? Uh, with as far as you like, dip? infinitely, because somebody's already written it. The question is, has has it had enough popularity for many people to write something like that and somebody to write enough to be, give it away free? Well, how do they get the bandwidth to do that? Well, that's the thing. Um, I mean, there, there, are these, <laughs> there are these chatting places, video chats, uh, like chat hangouts and things like that, and people use it. Yeah. And they normally use it for you know pornographic purposes, but you can use oh. it for for good purposes as well. It's the same equipment. You just use the same. You know, you do something similar. Anyway, I don't want to uh, hog hog the thing with this or the technical discussion, but basically these facilities exist, and they can be. Uh, you know, ju- you just need a bit of research, and you'll find something cheap or free, um, just like Kimmer is okay. using. It. Yeah, Kimry just posted a site here that you can check out. There you go, zoom.us. Okay. Well, so be it. And so it is. I had one more thing I was going to ask you, JP, and I 
slipped my mind. It's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll so talk about I'm it. It's a bit more. It's, it's probably it's technical. We'll, we'll talk about it off air. But um, yeah, good good ideas anyway. And so the the date we're shooting for is the twenty seventh. Is that right, Teresa? Can can you have it set up yep. by that that time? At what time? Well, um, I thought originally we were going to do it uh, after the show for our group. Uh, however, I would, you know, it's a Wednesday, so Wednesday at the usual time we could we could have it, or we could use maybe. Well, what if we had a regular uh, meeting, like a regular Earth Mind meeting, and work on Earth Mind, and then an hour after it, like well, let's complete that, and then after that we can do the dowsing, so that we don't miss out on on our work working with the the golden grid and the uh, ring of fire and things like that. Or would that or or we could do it at the beginning. I appreciate some feedback here. Well, we usually do the stellar group after the show. We I know. Would just, we would just so. substitute that for the stellar. Yeah, I thought that's what we were going to do, and would, which would be because Frank come. We, Frank calls us, you know, for our group at ten o'clock Mountain, mm-hmm. and so it would be, you know, eleven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Mm-hmm. So if you and would like, uh, you know, where depending on what time zone you're at. Mm-hmm. Well, I will happily do, do it during the the stellar block, and then uh, if it needs to be edited or anything like that, Gary, you could do that, and then use it as a an archive after that. What do you yeah, think? well, broadcast it live on the radio while it's happening. Oh, plus, I see. Plus, the, you make an archive, and I'll put it on YouTube as well, like we do with Frank's shows. Mm-hmm. That sounds but perfect. You, you want to do, yeah. you want to do the Stellar Group, and do the uh, your show after the Stellar Group. You can do it that way too, if you want. Or, you know, I'm pretty well available at that time. Well, we can. We'll check out and see what the mechanics of it would be to do to, uh, to what you need to set up for the larger audience, because I think we will have a larger audience for this. Mm-hmm. Right. Do, do you have any people that might want to be part of it uh, who are not already here, not part of our group right now, but other outside people are, might want to be you learn about dowsing too. Oh yeah. Are you got that allowing for that? I can do that. What about Teresa? Do you you have you could put the word out to your people and let them know mm-hmm. there's there's online radio, you know, where they can participate. Yes, uh, I can, can do get that it. if you want. Uh, it's up to you. Mm-hmm. Well, we can uh, share it with the Canadian Society of Dowsers and the American Society of Dowsers, and uh, they can tune in also. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'll get some action happening. So, uh, uh, excellent. Okay. You could even do video clips demonstrating the tools or actual applications that we can use the tools for and whatnot also. Mm-hmm. Well, um, <clears throat> do you want to do have video so everybody can see each other? Is that going to be what you're shooting for or just the, just the audio? Video. Yeah, we're on the twenty seventh of what September? No, no. August. August. Bam, I that's think only just three days. just the video of Teresa. I don't think it would have to be of anybody else other than the instructor. Oh yeah, and but and that's and not going to broadcast on the radio or on YouTube. It's just going to be the audio at this point. Teresa. It- Mm-hmm. Do you have a, a webcam on, uh, and do you have a smartphone as well? Yes, I do. Would you be? A, what you could do is you could record the seminar over your webcam, but also have your other co- your other phone set up as a camera, and you get a nice high definition uh, video record, and somebody can match that with the audio from the uh, 
from the archive and make a really nice, high-quality video. Right, That's my and then suggestion. you can put that on you. You put that on YouTube. That'll be yeah. cool. Yeah, and then you link that back into your site, and you got it on the video record on on Universal Mind and on Teresa's site. Uh, you, you. I was thinking, uh, London, uh, London Dowsers could have its own radio station. Come to me, and I'll help you. <laughs> cool. I, I gotta get past just the instructions you just gave me. <laughs> um, It'll be on the uh, replay. YouTube, Gary and Teresa, you can figure that out mm -hmm. between now and then. Sure. And then get back to, you know, Universal uh, Mind Radio, and Gary can update on the site of where we're at for Wednesday, depending on how much you can get done. Yeah, I'd like to see this uh, morph into a webinar that we can use regularly for classes. Yeah, to be mm -hmm. able to see Teresa would be really essential as far as I can see uh, as a novice dowser. Um, being able mm -hmm. to see how she uses her equipment and it, it would just be really essential to being able to learn about it. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'd be happy to share that. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Hey, Frank, I'll have to break down and buy one of your uh, dowsing tools there, the, <laughs> the Oracle. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, I thought I had sent you some of that stuff. Oh, uh, I didn't get it yet. Oh, no. Well, I hadn't sent it yet, so why then? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll send it in the etheric. Uh, <laughs> okay. Could have been, yeah. All right, that that's a wonderful idea, guys. We can, yes. uh, we can move steadily through that into uh, wider fields of teaching education and demonstrating healing and everything else we do also. This is what I was hoping to have when we get to Garden Valley as a studio where we can set up and actually have guest speakers come in and we can demonstrate various types of healing modalities and teachings, perhaps even webinar classes that way uh, on the various skills and, and adaptabilities that we have. So uh, we're, this is wonderful. We're moving right along. By the way, um, tomorrow could well be the big day when when Iraq seats its its new government and the funds will come available to bring all of our dreams to fruition uh, concerning Garden Valley and, and a lot of other things we want to do. So that's good news. Let's put some energy toward that. Okay, anyone else have any comments for, before we break? Um, well, we're talking about the um, about the uh, the energies that have been going around. I personally woke up with a headache today, uh, and I really think <laughs> it was too much. I, well, I woke up late, and I was in a real old state. So I basically resorted to uh, uh, to uh, good old fashioned aspirins and uh, and uh, cocodamols. So I have to say I'm quite happy now. But if we go off air, or if I hit the keyboard with my face um you'll know what's happened but uh everything's fine and i'm quite happy just now so um uh should we go for a break what would you like frank what sort of tune would you like um. how about shake it up baby twist and shout by the beatles huh wow uh let me just see compilations rock uh, there we go. I'm just going through my there's the Beatles, Beatles discography. Now what's that on? That's on the first album. Please please me, and Twist and Shout. Here we are, and there we go. The Beatles, Twist and Shout. I was thinking about. Welcome back to Healings and Meditations with Frank Jordan, the Earth Mind Think Tank Group, uh, involving everybody. Who's there? Frank, are you back? Yes, very much so. Excellent. So. 
And a bit of uh, 60s nostalgia there. Unfortunately, I couldn't get back to the 1740s nostalgia. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll forgive you this time. (laughs) I'll I'll try better, sir. Okay. Do we have any requests for healings tonight? I don't think so. Everybody's, Everybody's healthy. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we haven't had any come in yet. Oops. I don't think anyone. This is coming. Mike. My, how about for Mike? Let's. Uh, I am uh, right now. I am doing well, and my uh, my blockage seems to be alleviating. So, I would like some help to keep that going and uh, keep me on track for my scheduled discharge from hospital tomorrow. All right. Okay. Let's get everyone in the, the healing mode to begin with here. And we do that best from the step back, expanded state of consciousness where we do access higher consciousness and the galacticus and, and uh, our true gifts and abilities. So take your awareness up into your forehead and the frontal lobes of the brain, because that's where you are now. And just take one step back into the indwelling soul. You're really operating from the soul. It's that center of consciousness that that is interacting in this physical reality and experiencing. Now, this feel the unified group mind consciousness of the indwelling soul of, of the wolf mind meditation group. Extend it on out into the airways. Anyone who wants to listen. And participate, because this is a participation thing. Anything we do for, for someone specifically on the program, that energy is resonating out through our group mind consciousness to anyone out there who's interested in that particular problem. And even if you don't need it to heal yourself, you can direct it through your system to someone else with your intent. And you do this by feeling this energy flow that's coming through us right now from the galactics. And this has come through the, kind of through the top and back of our heads, down through our systems to our heart, and through the zero point. Then it radiates out our hand as a hot tingling sensation. And what's radiating is the female polarity in the left hand from earth mind, and in the right hand is the male polarity of oversoul. And with our directing, with our will and intent, into the zero point of the heart, in the standing ways of the heart, we resonate whatever our intent is, our desire for healing, to whoever's made the request. And in this case, we'll start with Mike, who's had a severe bowel problem for some like a year, year and a half now, some operations and things, and um, he's back in the hospital f- for a temporary blockage he had, and we're directing energy now to Mike. We're seeing his entire system clear up, become normal and stable. Through the power of the Christ within us, we see Mike in the perfect and normal condition. We see his system balancing the radiation, the chemotherapy, doing it the job that it's intended to do. In fact, we can wrap our awareness around the chemotherapy situation and send unconditional love into that therapy with the intent and direction of our intent, our desire, which is to heal. The desire is the feminine side. The power is in the male side. Between the two, we manifest through the power of the Christ within us, the pure and perfect form in Mike. So when he leaves the hospital tomorrow, he'll be pain-free come right back out in the world and regain natural health. And so it is. Okay.
Okay. So, uh, I, I was getting like uh, his intestines were tr trying to digest kind of really sharp, lumpy, rock-like things, or or cubes, or they were like sort of big granite rocks, you know, that it was uh, something just not able to pass through. Yeah, I got into something that uh, that the system had trouble with. It might, yeah. Um, yeah, it would, would certainly feel like that a little bit. Okay, let's go to Rachel now. <clears throat> As requests for healing for Logan, age 10, has been having multiple nightmare dreams about Ferdinand. <clears throat> Is it an entity attachment or past life needed to be cleared? Please do a healing for him as this is affecting his whole family. Okay, Logan. Um, Rachel, do you think of Logan so we can pick him up? All right, Rachel, since this is a, an acquaintance of yours, we're going to wrap you with galactic energy and you please conduct this healing for us. I need your assistance in dowsing. If you can douse if this is an entity or or some other cross-dimensional being. It is cross-dimensional. Uh, he has an open portal that allows entities to come in. Does he have a physical entity also? Yes, he does. So clear the physical entity first, and then work on clearing the, the portal. And lots of times I find in kids, as they have portals into their past lives, that they're still working through and clearing up the karma on. So, Do you uh, get that that's part of this also? Yeah. So you've got a, a big prescription there. Okay, so um, I'm wrapping my own self in protection, and I am then opening up a portal, and I am commanding that these entities go back to their perfect and rightful place, back where they belong, that you have um, no right to be here with Logan, and um, you need to leave. And all the, if there's cross-dimensional beings, and if there's past life beings, any beings that are uh, affecting Logan in this way, you need to go into the portal and go back to your original morphogenic field. I'm feeling some resistance. Um, yeah, I feel that too. I, I might need your help on this one, Frank. There's, uh, there's a, I feel something kind of pulling on the solar plex. All right. <clears throat> All right, we've dropped into that field and are, are releasing uh, a condition that is a fear in the low self that is set up around watching cartoons. And the kids are, have a difficult time comprehending or understanding a lot of the things they see in cartoons. Uh, there can be some pretty horrific things there, like devils and demons and witches and and things of that nature and that can open the portal into the root chakra from earth mind so we're clearing that portal now blocking anything to rise from 
the, the deep earth energies from the hell pit closing that in Logan and we want to clear his fear, his low self fear of anything he sees on television alright now we want to bring in light through, through Logan's crown chakra all the way down through his body and into the low self and fill up his aura with light open the portal so this will be a, an ongoing uh, ongoing condition where he will be pulling his energy his influences from his oversoul rather than his undersoul Frank, he also had cancer or a tumor where I've been feeling, like in the solar plex. So there's something there, too. All right, this could be a past life thing, a predisposition. So we'll go into the past life, follow his, his genetic trail back in time. Now, there it is. All right. Through the power of the Christ within us, we see Logan in his past life experiences. And then the genetic flow cleared of any predisposition to cancer or any other negative condition. Through the power of the Christ within us, we see Logan in his past lives in a pure and perfect condition. We bring that genetic programming forward in his DNA and extend it out to his entire family. Pouring the light of perfection into his DNA to adjust and eliminate any genetic predisposition to cancer or any other chronic illness. We assign a request, a healing angel to be with him, to help him and his family. And we clear his home, his bed particularly, where he sleeps. Block any earth energies or detrimental energies. And wrap it in light. Bring the galactic flow through. To set up a condition of permanent healing for Logan and for the entire family. And so it is. Okay, it's good you spotted that. Rachel. Yes, that one needed your assistance. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you. It's always good to know when to bring in the professionals. <laughs> that one needed the big guns. <laughs> That's right, the cannon. <laughs> okay, Anastasia in Whittier, California, had a long hug two weeks ago, and the lung uh, situation has been breaking up. She's snoring much more because of more airflow and sometimes chokes in her sleep. Request healing for this as well as to check progress of lung healing. Just in case the cause is not cleared up. She's working and not listening to currently, but we'll ask for healing anyway. All right, this goes through. Um, Petey Pants, which I think is her husband. <coughs> So we direct to Anastasia and Whittier, California. Feel the flow open up. The healing flow through your system down, right out to the back of your head, and out through your hands. And we put our hands, the left hand on her back, behind her lungs, the right hand on the front part of her chest. And we're extending a flow of positive and negative polarity through her healing flow bringing balance and perfection into her lungs 
the, the power of the kites is in us. We see these lungs in the perfect and normal condition. We see that condition breaking up and clearing, continuing to clear. See her being able to breathe more deeply all the way down to the base of her lungs. Now as we do this, for you healers, in those lung situations, I like to just clear essentially pick up how they feel and just bring the feeling of perfection, just widening out that feeling of congestion, bringing clarity into it. And it's amazing how well this works. Just keep on pushing the, the blocks out, the congestion, tissues, whatever it is, until the lungs feel clear and the bronchial tubes are clear. We'd like to also clear her nasal passages so she doesn't have impediments. So she's getting more oxygen at night and not snoring. And if this continues, I strongly suggest that you get a CPAP machine for her so she gets enough oxygen to rebuild her system because the shallow breathing habit she's been in has allowed that condition to develop in her lower lungs. All right, that feels good. So you wrap her in light, the healing energy. And so it is. We have another one from, from Petey Pants. That's for Peter. Peter <laughs> okay. He, he sees shadows coming at him and he meditates. Request check for entities and have them any fears involved with this to relax into pure energy. All right. This is becoming self aware, Peter. Learning how to create your reality instead of being subjective to it. So I'm dowsing to see if you have any indwellers. You do. Is this a low self indweller? Low soul indweller? Does Peter have a low self indweller? No, does he have a cross dimensional? Yes. Is this located in his low self? Yes. And here again, um, when you have things of this nature, it doesn't usually rise from the low self unless they're of a higher dimensional type energy. So what I'd like for you to do, Peter, is, is take charge of this healing yourself. Is take your awareness deep within yourself. Lift your awareness right up through your crown chakra now. And up into the oversoul with the intent to pull down protective, healing, clearing energy down through the top of your head, down into your body and throughout your entire system, clearing, pushing out any old patterns, fears, or programs, or anxiety concerning entities, or um, any kind of contact. Clear that all out. Know that you're okay. That you are. You command your reality. You you are not subjective to anything. If it's there, it's because you, for some reason, it's broken your your will and come in in the past, perhaps. And this can happen quite often through drugs and alcoholism and addictive things of that self. It opens up the low self to allow these energies to rise into the high self. So take this on down into your low self now. Willing the low self to clear and release any of its addictive uh, fears or any addictive nature. Closing the portals that may have been opened by addictions. Particularly closing the root chakra. 
to any any negative energy rising from earth mind. Now, Peter, Peter, you felt that light come in. I want you to practice one more time. Only this time, bring that light in through the back of your head. Pull in the galactic energy into yourself. This is the universal healing, unconditional love that you can use in any way you want, or you can use it to heal Anastasia or anyone else. Let's let this flow come through you now. Feel your hands heat up. Direct your attention to your body to fill up any spaces that any entity had occupied. Filling it up with light all the way down into the low self. And there, keep that channel open so at any time you want to even think about the galactic, the galactic flow, which is pure unconditional love that's available to us. It has all the frequencies that we need to, to heal absolutely anything in our reality. This is the energy that comes in through the zero point and manifests this polarity into your system to bring the, to bring, you can ask for anything, abundance, guidance, a better job or better relationship with your family, anything. You create your reality. So it's, so it's up to you to clear any negative aspects in, that have been programmed in and to reprogram it with positive reality. That's what we do with the clearing the way techniques. That's what my book is all about. You can find that on my website also. Okay, we close to Peter. Thank you, Peter. Those were good. All right. Uh, we have a is that Ken, Lord? Ken Lord, London, lymphatic cancer, low energy. Teresa, have we worked with this one before? No, we've not. No, my uh, he's a friend of my husband's. And uh, my husband asked me to make this request. Yeah. Is this your husband's boss? No, he was. Uh, he was. Um, he used to work in the same place, in the same building with okay. my husband a few years ago. <clears throat> yeah, I remember we worked on on uh, your husband's boss last week. So anyway, yeah, we will focus guy. on Ken Lord now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Through Teresa and through her husband, directing this energy to Ken. Lymphatic cancer. The first and always the first thing we have to look at here is is the circumstances of this. Uh, the mental emotional cause that allowed this to open up into his system. All right, what I'm getting is, is, and you've heard me say this many times before, how cancer is an honorable way of, of checking out and getting rid of a difficult situation. Uh, I call it honorable suicide and, uh, uh, many times what it does, it causes enough stress that the person will, will heal those properties or clear those, uh, negative causative factors out of his system and then the cancer will spontaneously heal, particularly if someone can direct his attention to that. So what I'm looking at here and feeling in him, in his, particularly in his, his, uh, lymph system, Pardon me. <clears throat> Got me in the chest there. Okay. We don't need to feel it quite so strongly. Thank you. Uh, we feel that his his life became sluggish. It's like um, in resistance to the circulation of life that he was experienced in. And 
in his resistance, his system responded by creating this cancer, which has broke down his, his his resistance, and the lymphs are, are picking up these cancer cells and trying to clear it, and so they become infected themselves. So we step back in, Ken, now. Ken, Lord, we step back into your past, and we help you to make right choice. Back in the past, it will give you a right and positive attitude in life and a reason for living. And through the power of the Christ within us in that past period of time, we bring light into your life and into your situation so you can make the choices that will give you a good and happy life and a reason for continuing life. And we create that in a parallel reality, a reality where you can regain your strength, your life, your vitality, and with that, the intent to release this condition. I, I don't like to name the conditions for what their common name is because that puts fear into people, but this, this temporary condition you brought on, we release that from you now. We bring in through the galactic flow, through our hands and everyone out there put their your unified group mind consciousness hands on each side of of Ken left hand on his back moving up and down in his back through the limb system right hand moving up and down as we bring into the limb system through the entire body a beautiful healing green Light that's dissolving the mental emotional cause and bringing back health and vigor and vitality into its system. We see a beautiful indigo color coming in now, bringing the pure light from Oversoul in to re-manifest the right and proper tissues in his limb system and anything that is metastasized into his body. We clear that and bring that back to normal now. We're seeing this happening inst instantaneously in the standing waves of Ken's reality. Through the power of the Christ within us, we see Ken in the perfect and normal condition. And we project that into the future. Yes, and in this projection you see you, there's absolutely no doubt when you make a future projection it can have no doubt or fear in it. We simply know it is done and it is done now. All right, Teresa, uh, we'll wrap him in light and you continue to reinforce that light as his system reemerges and, and um uh, comes back out into health and vigor again. Okay? Yep. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. Catherine is requested for Hilda Lee Staten in, in Staten, Oregon. Hilda Lee in Staten, Oregon. Dizzy in the morning. Very catty wampus. <laughs> That's a new disease if I ever heard one. Let's see. Type dizzy. Had stroke last February. All right. We're tuning in to Hilda Lee. All right, Catherine. You become Hilda Lee. And as you do this, you feel this disturbance in, in the polarity of her body. That the stroke threw her, her system out of balance. So we go back in time to February prior to the stroke. And we heal, heal the situation that created the stroke. And we bring her through without 
the stroke having occurred. You see, the way this works, you healers, is the stroke is a fact, but it's not the truth. It, it's just a hologram, and we're working in the hologram of her past standing ways, creating a new hologram of perfection and bringing it forward and bringing the, the correct polarity into her system as she comes forward. Balanced polarity so she doesn't have the dizzies. When she wakes up in the morning and stands up, she won't be cattywampus. And we project this into her future. All right. Now we close. Give us a report on that, will you, Catherine, as we go along? My pleasure. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, Free Sovereign. Healing request for Jen, about 25. Kansas City. Viola Performer with the symphony. The KC symphony cut to her left hand. Okay. We're putting our right hand over the fingers that were cut. And we're intensifying the rate of healing. We see the wounds healing up very rapidly. Uh, scar tissue forming where appropriate. And more importantly, we see her fingers getting toughened up so that she, they will callous and resist the friction of the strings as she moves them on the viola. But we see her retaining her sensitivity, so she has that delicate touch that makes her a wonderful viola player. Also, we're seeing in her wrists a predisposition to pain because of the position she has to hold her wrist in. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome. We clear that. And we wrap her hand in a, in a 110 energy bandage, which will continue the healing until she's strong and perfect again. This is interesting. I've, I've probably done a dozen violin players who had carpal tunnel from having to twist their, their wrists the way they do. And uh, it seemed to work perfectly, what we just did. <clears throat> okay, we have Teresa and your husband Doug, right knee. Okay, now I understand how it's difficult to heal someone that close to you because, number one, they may have a doubt that you can do it. And number two, your desire to get it right, and those can interfere with your energy. So we're going to just become you now and... And if your husband's with you, have him put his right hand on the outside of his right knee, his left hand on the inside. And we're going to go back in and clear the, the, the stress that he's put on that knee in his work or in the, by twisting it in any accidents or anything of that nature. Uh, clear the all right me listen to us we want to release now the, the stress that has been put upon you I'm talking to the consciousness of the knee we want you to come back into the pure and perfect condition and to do that we'll give you manifestive energy now to replace and rebuild the cartilages in your knee 
the pads and to rebuild with any bone that might be inflamed from friction. Doug's hand should be getting very hot right now. And we're going back in time and picking up in Doug's standing ways when that knee was perfect and healthy. And we're bringing that, that, that vision forward through the power of the Christ within us. We see this knee in the perfect and normal condition. Totally rebuilt Lig ligaments and tendons healthy and tight again. Give okay, a wrapping this in an, in a counterclockwise rotating green field of vibrational frequencies. Kelly Green, Emerald Green, and using that with the flow of galactic energy coming from our hands. Now the knee is hysterically in perfection, so we bring rotate an energy clockwise around the entire knee now, outside of the green energies. That's the, to give it the polarity balance that's needed to re-manifest the knee and we feel it happening now. Okay. And we let, let that stand and continue. Is, is Doug with you now, Teresa? No, he's not in the room right now. Okay, because I'd like, usually they can stand up and walk without any pain when we do that, so you might ask him, let us know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. JP. Yes, well... Um, Wolf Baby, my girlfriend and I were just just talking on Facebook, and uh, she's had the same thing as me, and uh, we've both been extremely tired, really, really exhausted. Uh, but when we, you know, uh, also staying up really too late as well. Uh, so there's a kind of we're so wired that we're awake until we're exhausted, then we sleep loads and loads and loads, and then and come uh, we're waking up and we're still feeling like we've got headaches and stomach aches and everything. And uh, I wonder if that's still part of your earthquake uh, scenario, because we don't normally get earthquakes up here, but we are near a volcano in Iceland that is supposedly a little stressed at the moment. So do you think we could do a bit of work with the earth mind and r run around the old Iceland uh, old Iceland ring of fire and somehow dissipate some of this energy? Is that possible? Oh, absolutely. And you, you've d disturbed your sleep cycles, too. Um, you know, your circadian rhythm. And a, a good way to get back into that, into the, that rhythm of when you lay down and you go to sleep and you shut off that busy energy in your head that may be patterned there habitually from staying awake too long or out of cycle is it, it, it take about five milligrams of melatonin and dissolve it under your tongue and that'll kick you right into that sleep cycle and if you do that a couple of times you'll be back in your circadian rhythm again but as far as the stress is concerned certainly we love working with earth mind so let's reach all, all of us reach our awareness out to Iceland now and that volcano that's threatening to erupt, yeah, just like a nice big pregnant pimple up there. So let's just burst that and let that energy go up etherically into our golden grid to reinforce our grid. We normally don't work in, in Iceland when we're doing our earthquake and, and volcano clearing 
Thanks for pointing that out to us. We will do that. All right. If you have a wonderful flow releasing, we thank you, Davis of, of Iceland, for cooperating with us and joining our crew here. We can do a lot of good work with you. Take that energy up into the golden grid. We use it to empower our thoughts and ideals we're creating for Earth. Okay. All right. Now, for JP and his and Wolf Baby, um, let's bring in a flow of stress relief for you because you're both stressed. Uh, it's your new situation. Just feel this flow drop in the top of your head and the back of your head. Flow down your spines. And with it, just loosen up and release the stress of all those unresolved problems that you're carrying with you. And in your mind now, if you can identify the, the unresolved problems that you're working on, just imagine the resolution in your mind and release those downward into your low self so it'll release the, the stress from your solar plexus. That's how we heal stress, is by picking up whatever the stress energy, the situation is. We imagine it will carry through with imagination or fantasy, carry through to fulfillment, and the subconscious immediately drops the stress, lets it go because it, it, the, whatever the stress is, it's no longer a, a threat to your survival. There, now, that's allowing the, the light energy to drop on down through you. Yeah, just feel that energy dropping right out the, the base of your spine down into the earth. There, it feels all better now, doesn't it? Oh, I felt several layers just kind of go away, uh, layer by layer. <laughs> it's a, a mm -hmm. bit. I still feel a little bit uh, slightly nauseous, but uh, yeah, that's that's the solar plexus. Well, well that, that, go 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 back to, to the solar yeah. plexus then, and where you're holding up the stress of creating all this new radio stuff. And just know that it's done. Project yourself in the future when everything's done and working perfectly and feeling wonderful. And just let this, that pattern of all the things you need to do, let it go. Float down the spine into earth mind. And visualize the perfection and the, all the fun you're going to have and the joy that, that you're experiencing and all the good the information you're bringing to the world and the, the, the helping the world get lighter. There. Yeah, I, I, um, I, well, I, I built a uh, Shungite wand. Uh, I've been talking about it in, on the show. Um, and while we were doing that, that wand was pointed to Iceland <laughs> and, and the other end was pointed to me. It was like making a bridge. Uh, and sort of channeling a lot of energy through me and then back out through my other hand with my crystal wand to the local portal um, and then uh, handing it over to the portal itself. So uh, uh, it's just like I'm, I'm making a telephone connection like the old-fashioned operators, you know, they pull a wire out and they plug something in. Just felt like I was doing that. Now, I've been doing that in my meditations. My, my body automatically does that uh, okay, on a good. bodily scale so uh, now I'm doing it on a planetary scale that's very uh, very interesting perfect uh, well we expect you to heal the planet's problem so w uh, where's there any stress Wednesday? in that Wednesday no no, <laughs> no pressure uh, and the um, <laughs> a lovely thing about the, what you're saying also is the uh, the solution of all the the resolution of all the open things it's been mm -hmm. a lot of, it's been a month it's been a whole month since uh, Dave passed away and handed me the station and um uh 
it's one moon we're full moon to full moon uh, new moon to new, new moon I mean. and um this last few days has been tying up some things and getting some things done and i'm really uh I, last night uh colleen took the helm as it were and bright eyes and and took the helm for a few hours and it was like <sighs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> so that was Get the yourself. feeling. But like, uh, I want to have that feeling when Gary's on board, when Sean's on board, when uh, yeah. when Swami's on board, when we got all the new producers in. So that's that's the next cycle. But we've got two for this cycle. And we've got two new websites, so it, it's all working very well. And, and I'm really pleased to uh, to have helped Gary to get him where he's at. So thanks. All for right, me. and be sure to schedule in some scheduled regular sleep time too. Uh, that's that's critical to get back into that circadian cycle. You don't need that many hours of sleep as long as it's good, deep, restful sleep. Okay. Okay. So, anyway, so there's uh, there's uh, the uh, the Icelandic thing as well because uh, it has we we had an eruption just a few years ago uh, and uh, it erupted and all airline traffic was banned in the northern hemisphere. That was the little one, Ayafiala Yaku, uh, and um, Yaku, I think it, itself is like Ayafiala means the little volcano near Yaku, <laughs> and and mm-hmm. and Yaku itself is um, is is a massive massive volcano. So if we can release that pressure and make it not blow uh, this cycle round, then we might be doing all right. Yeah, remind us on on the Earth Mind meditations too. And we can do that. How far are you from this earth or uh, volcano, JP? Um, well, we're we're you know uh, we're in Scotland. It's in Iceland, but um, if you look on Google Earth, you'll see it's not that far. You know, we're the nearest civilization to Iceland. You know, we're the n- nearest like uh, uh, other industrialized country. Uh huh. So, so the volcano is in eastern Iceland. Yeah, on the t- trail Close of the wind. Close to Scotland. And you're channeling that, all that energy. Through my head. Oh. Didn't take long. It's all right, I can handle a higher voltage. <laughs> no wonder you got a headache. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> okay, for further healing, Joan, do you have any requests for your brothers? Dave is doing better. Um, the healing we did on him last time, he did see an improvement. So I think at this time, we'll just hold. Well, let's just reinforce the healing. because we just give him the energy for his system to work with. Let that flow of unconditional love come through you, and he'll know what to do. His body, his system knows what to do <clears throat> to repair itself. And again, he was he was under stress, uh, is, is why... Uh, that heart had that situation, so I sense him the stress is being relieved now, and he's he's looking for some help, some way to help him with that stress. Very much. All right, through the power of the Christ within us, we see. Dave's heart in a perfect and normal condition. It's just like holding that heart in your hands and visualizing and everything perfect and bright. And if there's any problems in it, they'll show up as dark spots. So you, you just neutralize the dark spots and, and dissolve some of that fat away from that heart too. It doesn't need that there. That's cholesterol buildup. That's what's causing these problems. We'll take a rotor rooter to his main veins and those lateral oh. lateral arteries and there. That, very good. And so it is. <clears throat> All right. Do we have anyone else, JP? Um, yeah. Hang on. Have I put up Cindy? Did we help with Cindy? Uh, we haven't done that. Christine 777. Oh, yes. yes. Christine and her poor, poor Christine. 
Which, <laughs> she has intense... <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, Gary. Uh, she has intense hemorrhoids due to previously being impacted. That sounds... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hemorrhoid cream contains bismuth, <coughs> I noticed today. Uh, are you acquainted with this one, JP? Uh, no, but she's in the chat room. Christine 777 is in the uh, Wall Street chat room. All right, good. Well, Christine, what I see necessary for you is, is just a general healing and a relaxation of that condition. I see a lot of thickening, a lot of intense inflammation around that. So we release that go back in time and through the power of the Christ within us we see this rectum in the pure and perfect condition hemorrhoid shrinking this, the tearing repairing and that when I look at your system, we need to <clears throat> create a softening condition so the material can pass through your intestines easily and without causing stress. So we're going to do that now. I have, we have our communal hands on each side of your, your abdomen and bowels. Radiating a, a loosening a visualization of this turning into water and moving quite easily, lubricating. Okay, the system is moving more naturally, passing it out more rapidly, not holding on to it. Okay, you have some disturbance in your system too. Um, as far as the bacteria in your colon is concerned, I recommend some um, what do they call it? Bionics or probiotics? Yeah, probiotics. To help to stabilize your system there. All right, that that's interesting. We're healing your whole whole intestinal system now. Release the stress in all the muscles around your buttocks, and the top of your legs, and lower back. Let all that stress there and tight muscles relax and, and let, let it go. Let go of the fear and anxiety of the condition. Find a place where you can sit down without fear. Yeah, that's an important point, Gary. Uh, these energies tend to store in our chairs where we sit. And if we sit in an office chair all day, uh, it, that type of energy, uh, it's, it's almost like the environment stores whatever energy we are radiating. And it, you might get feeling better at home when you come back to work and sit down in that chair. And it, it, it brings the situation back again because of stress and tension. So clear, mm-hmm. clear the, clear every place that you spend where you sit much. Clear it down with a pink whirlpool, just spiraling the energy out of it. And do it every day. A couple of times a day until your, uh, your environment quits polluting you. Go to your bed also. Okay, close. 
Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, we got a couple more here. Um, who have we got on the old scoreboard? Uh, yes, we have, of course, Cindy from Milwaukee. Um, actually, my uh, my girlfriend said, you know, the other day, we haven't heard much from Cindy, so uh, welcome back, Cindy. <laughs> um, now, Cindy is asking to release negative thoughts, energies, manifestation, and she's being attacked at work. Maybe I knew others feel threatened by me, so not sure what to do. So... Um, Behavioral and uh, a, a, a psychic attack clearing advice required, I imagine. All right, Cindy. This is a case of where you get to learn how to how to manage your reality instead of being subjective to it, because you're you're letting these exterior energies that you feel like an attack get to you. It could be um resistance or thoughts from your co-workers and things of that nature or whoever you're associated with but the thing to do is just to find your cent- central focus of power and you do that by taking your awareness right in through your forehead back into your soul center then reaching up through your crown chakra to your oversoul and pull down personal power down right down into the core reality of your system repattern your core reality of strength and power and the feeling of being safe and protected and you radiate that out through every cell in your body outward into your aura and we see the three polarities of your aura Actually, three orbs of dual polarities balancing and harmonizing. So you have personal power and positive thoughts. And you can use this energy to clear negativity out of your thought. Anything that keeps rising up in your mind all the time and prompting you is coming because of stress or negative patterning in your hard disk of your computer. So when you think about it, hold it in your front lobes of your brain, whatever's bothering you, and feel in your body wherever that that is stored or wherever you're being attacked or the or the vibe reports are picking it up out of your environment. And wherever you feel it, you take part of your awareness down to that and just push it out. It's just an energy pattern, it's just a portal, it's just a thought form. Push it out of your system and you'll feel it flow out dissipate away and then you close your system off to any any <clears throat> any energies that are manifesting outside of yourself and attacking you <clears throat> or anything you can feel at all you should feel totally neutral self-contained happy uh, well let's bring those traits in reach up again into the oversoul and pull down your personal power and for you, that'll extrapolate out as being happy with, with your environment, with the people you're worth, with. Enjoying your work and your reality. Having a positive outlook on life. Pull this all the way down to your low cell. Put it in your low cell, because that's the one that carries the, the anxiety and the stress and, and fear of survival. Too often we ignore the low self, but it's the one that manages the body and the emotions. And uh, the, the, the high self uh, interacts out here and thinks it's doing just fine, but the low self is an entirely different consciousness. And the high self is an indweller in this body, and the low self just sees it as an invader and often resists the uh, control of the, the high soul, and so it can create situations that makes it uncomfortable for the high soul, and then actually they, they they actually battle with each other over who's in control, in control of this moment of the of this everyday um, reality that we're experiencing. Every moment is a moment of choice. And if your point of attention is in your low self and focused on your problems, then it's in charge. And it, and it through the law of attraction, it will attract more problems. If your attention is in your high self and you're sending light and energy down into the low self to dissipate the problems, uh, 
then you, it, the low self will respond to that. And uh, uh, it's there to protect you and, and manage the body, and it has to agree that you're, the high self wants to have a certain experience before it can happen. So that's all in my Clearing the Way to Higher Consciousness book. If you want to look on my website, you can see that. And I'm sending these out electronically now. We can no longer uh, afford to have them printed. So I send them out electronically, and you can have them in five minutes. There's three books, Clearing the Way to Higher Consciousness and Earth Mind and Learning to Live with Subtle Energy. And they're all about you managing your reality, your inner reality and your outer reality. Okay, what do we have now? I think we're just about out of time. Um, quick lung infection for Chris. Bill's hat, he has a lung infection that he can't get rid of. All right, let's just focus a lot of energy on... Bill's lung infection stimulating his immune system. It's centered right there in the middle of his lungs in the thymus area. Stimulate that thymus to resist the infection. T cells to create antibiotics, white cell stimulation to break down the infection in the spleen. Now, Bill, if you're listening, take your etheric hands, just like putting your thumbs right uh, on each side of your bronchial tubes and just move your etheric hands inside your body and gather up this congestion and push it out, just blow it out of there. Throw it out energetically. And you can break down the, the thought form of the infection itself. And we can clear the life force away from the infection and it'll soon break down. It. You can help th- throw that out. All right, JC. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Good night, everybody. Good, good night. All right. <laughs> <laughs>